Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Can we just lift our hands in his presence? That song say, Hallelujah, for you are God. You are Lord. Father, we recognize your presence. We thank you for the relationship that you allow us to establish with you. And it all only came possible through by Christ Jesus. It was he who have reconciled all things back to himself. And we thank you, Father Lord, for the exchange that was made place on Calvary's cross. He took our sins and bared all of our burdens. And that exchange was made that as many that were called upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, repenting of our sins and acknowledge him as Savior and Lord, shall be saved. And Father, we thank you for this opportunity that we get to worship you. Yes. There's countries, Father God, Lord, that they yet forbid people to call on the precious name of Jesus. People are yet giving up their life, Lord God. The underground churches are yet being bombarded because they have because they choose to call on the name of Jesus. But we here in America, Father God, Lord, we're able to shout his name on the mountaintop and we're able to reverence him. And we thank you that he is the gift to us. And we thank you, Father God, Lord, for our Savior and our Lord. We thank you for the person of the Holy Spirit in Christ Jesus' name. And everybody says, amen, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Uh, we'd like to give a special shout out to Mother, M Mother Lily, amen, and some of our other parishioners, those who weren't able to make it today, and to all of our uh, guests, visitors, and friends, and to our special guests, those of you who are watching through, by the way, of, of, uh, of the internet, we bless the Lord for you. We trust that uh, you have experienced a time of worship uh, as you worship with us. And one thing we do know, uh, our Heavenly Father, He loves to be praised. He loves to be worshipped. Amen. And worship is so important because when we worship Him, they're saying that we're drawing our attention away from ourselves and from other things, and we're focusing our attention solely on Him. Amen. And, and you know how it is that um, um, uh, that when you uh, it's it's always rewarding to know that you have a person's. Uh, undivided attention when you are sharing something that is so important. And uh, our Heavenly Father through His Son have shared some very important information uh, to us and in it, it is life. Jesus is the lifeline, amen, to the Father. And we bless God that uh, the Word of God says that those that have an ear to hear, let them hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. Uh, Dr. Sander and I, we have been uh, ministering uh, uh, on the topic of, um, uh, of the um, uh, generations of priests. And uh, I love it when she tied in the timeline in terms of the prophetic for uh, 2016, uh, uh, which we call 5776, according to the Hebraic calendar. And uh, according to the Hebraic calendar, that the new year came in uh, around September. But according to the Roman uh, calendar, uh, which we exercise here in the in the West, uh, uh, it came in January one. So, but we know that the prophetic word uh, talking about I uh, it, uh, it it is the year for revelation, and it is the revelation of the nail. And we know uh, the nails uh, that was driven are in Christ's hands and in His feet. Amen. It nailed Him to the cross. And we see it as part of the sacrifice that taken place, but there's something else that have taken place. Uh, as Christ was nailed to the cross, the Word of God let us know that He had borne our sin. He carried our sins to the cross. Yeah. Amen. Uh, he fasting, he fa I, our sins was fasting to the cross. Yeah. Amen. To give us security in Christ Jesus. That's why that when Christ, or we are buried with Christ, and we are risen with him because Christ, uh, when he went and when he died, uh, he gave up his own life. Isn't that right? And on the third day morning, he got up out of the grave, declaring that all authority and power has been given unto him. So we that died and we was risen with Christ as a new creature in him. So our, 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 our uh, salvation... Amen. Everything 
uh, uh, pertaining to life and godliness is secured in Christ Jesus. Look at your neighbor and say, say that your future is secured in Christ Jesus. Your future is secured in Christ Jesus. Your future is not secured in the White House. It is not secured by the county government or the state government and the city government. But our security, amen, or our future is secured in Christ Jesus and him alone. See, uh, being that we have been reborn again, praise God, amen, we became reborn again. And, and this birth is a spiritual birth. Look at your neighbor and say it is a spiritual birth. Amen. They're saying that the old things have passed away. What you're talking about, the old ways, the old worldly ways of Alonzo T. Gay has passed away. And behold, amen, after the tearing of the veil, I became a new creature. Right. Amen. amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Because when Christ was hanging on that cross and after, after he died, so forth and so on, the word of God tells us that the veil of the temple it split in twine, not from the bottom up, but from the top down. And that is to say that man was reconciled back to God and God also was reconciled back to man. There was a reason why the veil, amen, was split from the top, from the bottom, because from the bottom, praise God, we all can go through. But from the top, God was able to step back into place again, amen, with union with man. Only through by the precious blood that was shed on Calvary's cross, and that is our Lord and Savior. This is what we call the power of redemption. Amen. Not the power of money, not the power of intellect, not the power of statuses or so forth and so on, but the power of redemption. Amen. We are secure in Christ Jesus and him alone. Hallelujah. And that excites me. And uh, uh, we're going to continue to talk about uh, the generations of priests because we are the generations of priests. And, uh, but there's some things we need to fasten down. We need to have that assurance. And when we look at I am Va, as Dr. Sandra have taught us, the year of 5776, which is uh, 2016, amen, it let us know uh, that his hands and his feet uh, it was nailed and he was pierced and amen. And, 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 and watch this now, because our, our life is secure in him, my future is secured in him. Amen. That causes me to pierce through darkness. I cannot pierce through darkness by myself. Amen. If you have a flashlight, you turn that flashlight on in the midst of darkness, it pierces through darkness. Isn't that right? Well, Jesus, amen, he's the light of the world. Yeah. And he's only is the light of the world to those who have uh, received the revelation of who he is. Yeah. Amen. We have to have a true revelation concerning Christ. And when we are connected with him, come on now, my future is connected. Everything about me is connected. And so therefore, it pierces the darkness of this world. Yeah. Amen. I'm fastened and I am secure in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Good. Hallelujah. So when we think about a nail, uh, the nail is used to, to secure, connect, fix, and and, and, and fasten, attach uh, anything that the Lord has put together. And when you think about the tabernacle, uh, when it was, especially when they had built it in the wilderness, they used curtains. They used curtains, they used goat hair, and I, I won't get into the whole thing about the top down to the bottom. They used a nail to fasten it together. Think about it now. Christ, our hope of glory, he's the holy one of Israel, he is the holy one of us, he is the redeemer of our soul, everything about Christ is secure. Look at your neighbor and say, everything about Christ Jesus is secure. Christ Jesus is secure. Hallelujah. And so Jesus said, I come not to do my will, but I come to do the will of him that sent me. So therefore, Christ's assurance and confidence, amen, was secured in his heavenly father. It had to be because if Christ will, would have violated, amen, 
or compromise the plan of God, you and I wouldn't be here today worshiping him. Praise God. And so therefore, uh, the, 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 the tabernacle or the curtains, uh, there was three, three individuals. You had the, uh, the outer court, inner court, and the place of holy of holies. And it was all fastened by nails. And so our life is fastened in Christ Jesus, and that's where our security and our hope is in. Can you say amen to that? Amen. That excites me because it's very, very powerful. Amen. Um, when we think once again concerning about the nail, uh, Dr. Sandra brought out so clearly on last Sunday, and if you turn with me real quick to I, Isaiah, Isaiah, the 55th verse. I'm sorry. I'm going to end up there. Isaiah, the 54th verse. Isaiah 54, and we're going to begin reading that verse 2 and 3. Verse 2 and 3. One is good because it's sending a message to those who fear bearless. Isaiah 54, beginning at verse 2. Notice what it said. Enlarge the place of thy tent. Uh -huh. Now we know that the tent was put together by nails back in the day. The tabernacle. The holy place. And let them stretch forth the curtains of thy inhabitation. That was demonstrated on Sunday as the Spirit of the Lord began to move upon our heart. He said, let them stretch. And we find out you just don't have anybody to stretch you. I need somebody, amen, number one, I need, I need to have a, a relationship with them. I need to know something about them. You just don't go to any old contractor and have them to come over to your home and to enlarge it. You want to know something about them. There's, there's a gentleman, praise God, uh, uh, he's being sued today because uh, he had given the people false hope and he have taken their money, and there is no completion of the work that he have started. So therefore, they should have gotten in contact, and they should have, they should have did their due diligence, amen, to find out something about this man's company, and they would have found out that he's no good. So this is why relationship is so important. And so it is important for me to know what type of relationship that I have with those who's going to help stretch me to purpose. Somebody say, stretch me, stretch me. To, purpose. to purpose. That is saying that someone understand and they have a, a kingdom mindset and they understand the purpose of God. And watch this. Jesus said, as you have freely received, then you freely give. Amen. So if I receive something and if I can be of any kind of aid and assistance to you, then I don't mind help stretching you to purpose. Amen. Because we are secure in Christ Jesus. So we say that the stretching come through, by the way, a relationship. I also had given another illustration. Uh, 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 my mentor who, who have gone on to be with the Lord, Prophet Tom Morrison, and also our bishop, Dr. Jerry and Dr. Sher Episcopo, and, and another spiritual mother go back years and years ago, Mother Mary Williams. Amen. They have stretched me to a purpose. They help stretch me out of a worldly mind and to a God-conscious mind. They help stretch me, amen, to look at it from another view. They help stretch me in the way of prayer. They help stretch me in the way of fasting. They help stretch me in the way of standing. They help stretch me to study, to be quiet, and to see the salvation of God. How many of you want people like that around you? Amen. Praise God. And watch this. And we're not talking about uh, them being dogmatic in any kind of way. Amen. When you go to the doctor, you go to the doctor so that he can stretch you out of sickness. Amen. Into being whole. Isn't that right? We know that they practice medicine. Come on. But how much more, how much more when he said, let them stretch, let them stretch, let them stretch what? Let them stretch forth the curtains of thine habitation. The Lord is saying right now, and this is a special bulletin, 
to everybody in here. Your inhabitation is too small. It cannot contain everything that God, our Father, wants to give to you. You can say amen tomorrow. Amen. amen. Your inhabitation is too small. It's too small. The Lord is wanting to give you more. One of his name is Jehovah Jireh, yeah. our provider. Yeah. Amen. So he, wanted, he wants to stretch you. Amen. He wants he want to stretch you so that your inhabitation can be enlarged. And watch it. He says, spare not. Look, there's times we have second thoughts about a man being stretched. But he says, spare not. Spare not. Lifting thy cords and strengthen thy stakes. For thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left, and thy seed shall be, and thy seed, seed shall inherit the, the Gentiles and make the desolate city to be inhabited. So praise God, as I'm being stretched, it's saying that not only, watch this, let me say this. I was meditating on this this morning, four day this morning, and it's all about being stretched. And, and I'm going to come to a conclusion to this third verse concerning about the next generation. We cannot give the generation anything that we don't have ourselves. We need to model what the kingdom of God is all about. When you are having bright days and when you're having dark days, the kingdom of God yet need to be modeled in and through your life so that they can see, amen, sometimes people visually need to see something. Have you ever heard the statement, I've heard a lot about you now I'm able to connect the face with the name. Sometimes people need to connect the demonstration with the word of God. And sometimes, once again, you might be the only Bible that they read, and that is your life. This is how they're going to inherit it, the, the Gentiles. Amen. So as you're being enlarged and when they come to you and this is just a commercial for the kingdom of God, when they come to you concerning about a problem, when they come to you concerning about an issue, you can say, yeah, baby, I've been there, too. Well, what you had to do about it? Well, this is what I had to do. All right. And you can give them step by step how the Lord delivered you. And and watch this now. Your step by step may not be in the exact order that they may take, but at least they know they're not the only one who have went through. They're not the only one who had to believe God. There's too many people trying to model in the body of Christ how to get rich. I'm going to leave that alone. Somebody say leave that alone. Amen. I'm going to leave that alone. Amen. Amen. So, so now that bring us to, that bring us to, uh, we are the generation's a priest and our support of scripture once again is from first Peter the second chapter and verse 9 and this is the new King James version when you find it say amen notice what it says can we read that together New King James, ready, read. But you are a chosen generation, a royal, a holy, his own, that you who call you. Let's get a Lord of praise offering for that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We want to uh, wear you out in terms of you get it in your spirit. Uh, uh, as we was teaching on this last Sunday, uh, we discovered some things, and, uh, and we found out that sometimes we allow ourselves to be hindered, hindered over small things or small stuff. Look at your neighbor and say, don't sweat the small things. Yeah, don't sweat the small things. And, and uh, I look at the Israelites, and I may come back on this again. Uh, when we think about the three dimensions uh, of God, one dimension that I like to just share real quickly 
uh, is they was captured in Egypt. They was led out of Egypt into the wilderness and then also into the promised land. So three dimensions, Egypt, wilderness, promise. Somebody say Egypt, Egypt. wilderness, wilderness. Promise. promise. Say it again. Egypt, Egypt. wilderness, wilderness. Promise. promise. And that's where some of us might be located at. Uh, you know, it really had taken something for them to really be exodus out of Egypt. They were God's own special people. We are God's own special people. Have you ever been around people, praise God, they still have that Egypt mentality? They still have the worldly mentality? They love God, but they still have the worldly mentality. Amen. It's going to take something to convince them that God is in control. And God was in control during the time of, of the Israelites when they was been exodus out of Egypt. They witnessed the mighty works of God as God began to use Moses as a mouthpiece, a messenger to go before Pharaoh. And each time you know the scripture, things begin to happen. And I promise you the Israelites was able to witness the water turning into blood. The locusts came and all the boils began to break out, the death and all this type. So God proved himself who he really was. And then so out of, out of Egypt, now they was in the wilderness. The wilderness represent worldliness, worldliness. And this is why it's so important that people who are born again, we need to come to Bible study. Sunday is not going to do it for you. If it was, some of us would be a lot more further than where we are. Amen. Sunday, you got to stop looking at Sunday as a good deed and glad tidings that I'm going to give Big G some of my time. No, he wants all of your time. He don't want us to fit him in his schedule. Come on now. We need to be fitted in his schedule, which we are through by the blood of Jesus. Do you hear me what I'm saying? So therefore, there, therefore, when we are yet wrestling with the worldly mentality or the worldliness, we are yet Psalms 23 disciples. We can't be trusted, amen, with the keys of the kingdom of God. Now you may say, well, I got this. I have cars. I have houses. I have land. I have boats. I have statuses. I go this, I go that one. Yeah, I mean, you look good on the outside. But let's take a look on the inside where it really counts. Isn't that right? Because he's coming back after, after a church without spot or wrinkle or blemish. Praise God. So, so we have people in the body of Christ. They love God, but they still have that willingness mentality. And this is where the circumcision need to take place. They need to be circumcised. And amen. And if you dare to be circumcised, amen, of the foreskin of your heart, you're going to see the Lord Jesus Christ more clearly. Amen. Each time, each time uh, there, we should always experience a type of circumcision. And what that means is that is that I have a greater revelation of who Christ is in my life than it was last year, year before last. Or whatever season that I'm in, isn't that something? Whatever season that I am experiencing, it will help me to, to have a greater revelation of who Christ is. Amen. And sometimes our season, well, a lot of time our seasons, it, it served as, the, as that sharp, sharp blade or that knife that circumcised our heart. Because sometimes our seasons put us in a place where it, where it appears as though our back is against the wall. And one of the days we're going to wake up. We can't work it out by ourselves. We can't do it by ourselves. It calls us to cry to God. And have you noticed, have you noticed that when you experience a different season that is bigger than you, that is larger than you, and you don't have no control over it, sometimes we have to wake up and realize I don't have control over this season. So the best thing is to do is to believe God in this season. Come on, King Priest. Come on, King Priest. And we'll get to the real place of another revelation that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and power. The flesh and blood, praise God, that's pediatric. 
Amen. If the enemy can, if the enemy can always use a warfare tactic to keep our mind on the flesh and blood, then we're going to really miss where the battle is located at. Amen. Amen. So the battle is not the battle is not the flesh and blood, but it is the principalities and power, the spiritual wickedness in high places. Are you getting this this morning? Well, she don't do this. He don't do that. The children's this, the children that. Uh, this and that and one thing to that. Look, get your eyes off of that and get the real revelation in terms of what's really going on. Right. It's easy to blame ship and say, this is why I can't do this. This is why I can't do that because of no, 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 no. We need a revelation of who Christ is in this season. So God will with the same temptation in in your time of season, make a way for an escape. Amen. How did he do that? You come to a real place of revelation. Amen. Lord, I can't do anything without you. Lord, I'm hopeless. Lord, I'm lost without you. I need you just like I needed you in the last season. Yes. Amen. This season is totally different because now, Lord, it's so close. It's like a nose on, it's just, it's just like a nose on my face. I can't see it. I'm just that close to it. So therefore, I need something that is greater than my five senses. I need the Holy Spirit to walk me through this. Just like the Holy Spirit walked me through the last season, he will walk you through this season. Can you say amen to that? Amen. amen. And, so, and so this is why and I sense this so strong. Some of us, we're in seasons right now, and if you're not careful, you're going to repeat the same season over and over and over. Watch this. There's winter, summer, winter, spring, summer, fall. Some of us keep experiencing fall. Some of us keep experiencing winter. Come on now. Some of us keep experiencing spring. And it's all right if you're going to keep having babies. Hallelujah. <laughs> I heard that somebody said the devil is a liar. But, but watch this, watch this, watch this. But what, what, what would it look like if you keep experiencing a winter? A winter in some places of America, there's snow, and when snow covered the, uh, cover the ground, snow, ice, things cannot grow. Amen. That's why they have the trains, they have the, 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 uh, the, the uh, semi trucks, they have cargo that's being lifted by air and so forth and so on to get to these other places, the other states, so they can continue to have food. The resources are coming in. But, if, but watch this now. If, if we stay in a place of winter, if we stay in a place of fall all the time in our spiritual life, there's no growth. And we will find ourselves always complaining, 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 the same old battles, the same old don't likes, the same old headaches, the same old this and that, until you come to a real place of a new revelation of who Christ is in your life, you will always, you love the Lord, but you always stay in that same little, that same little season. Amen. The Lord trying to get you out of that season. Hallelujah. He's trying to take you out of that season and open up another page to your life. He have, he have already afforded us the opportunity because we're joint heirs to the kingdom. We're generations of priests. We have, we have rights to the kingdom. We're going to touch that here in just a little bit. We have rights to the kingdom. I don't care how you look at yourself. I don't care what you think about yourself. Glory be to God. I don't care what you did last night or last week. If you have given the Lord Jesus Christ your heart, you have given him your soul. You made him Lord and Savior. Come on now. You have the Holy Spirit on the inside. Praise God. Look, don't sweat the small stuff. Just repent. Get back on your feet and act like nothing never happened. Because watch this now. Watch this. If, if you draw attention to it, then the enemy will too. I'm going to go over here. If you draw attention to where you messed up at, then the enemy will too. Dr. Sander brought out last Sunday concerning about uh, the spies when they went over to Canaan. Their assignment was to go over there and bring back the proof. And when they got there, some of the men, 10 of the men, they saw these giants and in their own mind's eye, come on now, in their own mind, they saw themselves 
as little grasshoppers. And they was putting words in the giant's mouth. And the giants didn't say not one thing. Do you hear me what I'm saying? Sometimes we see ourselves as little grasshoppers before something that is so great. The Lord made you worthy of everything and to everything pertaining to his kingdom. It's not in your degree. It's not in your status. It's not in your finances. It's not, it's not in anything pertaining to, pertaining to this earth realm. Because you are born again, you have rights to the kingdom. A well, pastor, you don't understand. I'm on a fixed income. Look, if your mind is locked on that fixed income, you're going to stay in that season. Yeah. Hallelujah, somebody. I feel the Holy Ghost up in here. Well, pastor, you understand. Uh, I stay in this apartment, and I'm, I am the third generation in the apartment. So what? You still have rights to the kingdom. Doesn't matter what your situation may be. The enemy tried to use this mind. He tried to use this mind. Amen. As a workshop. Amen. And he will set up workshops to tell you everything that you're not and everything that you can't have. But how many of us have went to workshops so that we can improve ourselves? If it's computers, if it's your vocabulary, people skills, whatever the case may be, when you got through, glory be to God, you was a little bit ahead of the game. You improve yourself. Isn't that something? Praise God. How much more? Somebody say how much more. How much more our Heavenly Father is trying to convey to us to let us know that we are very precious in his sight. Come on now. Once again, it doesn't matter if you male or female, born, born or free. It might be someone that might be watching through by the way of the prison. It doesn't matter. Praise God. Whom the Lord has freed, they are free indeed. Amen. So once again, and go back to my statement, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Though we walk in the flesh, come on now. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and power. This is so important. And, you know, I, I just need to drive this because, because if we don't understand, if we don't understand warfare, if we don't understand who we are, we're going to keep fighting a battle where it really don't count. Wow. Keep fighting a battle where it really doesn't count. Year in, year out. Same conversation. Yeah. Praise God. Well, you don't know what happened to me. Well, you don't know what happened to me. Yeah. 